I've done this, uh, this, this videos before. I've done it with, uh, with Khalil and so on. Yeah. Right. And I, I got a lot of backlash uh, that we had to do a, a reaction video to actually clear our name because uh, even like the basics of six, uh, they make a reaction video, but uh, unfortunately, they were not educated enough on their own history. Neither were they educated on their own religion and they misinterpreted us they strawman us and they lied just basically a lot. Uh, me and Khalil went back and forth to uh, see if we wanted to do this. Because they were leaders and we don't want to spoil your name. But since they, they were trying to do that to us, so we had to clear our name. So mm. this was the reason why we did it. So if there's any questions that anyone watches this video, any sick who watches this video, if you have any questions you want to clear up that uh, if you think that I'm lying or making anything up, I will share with the brothers over here the link and you can go and watch those videos because we, we explain everything there from the own Sikhi scholars, not from a Muslim scholar, not from a Christian scholar, from your own Sikhi scholars itself. So let me go into this. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome back to the realest podcast in the dunya, the three Muslims. We're not joined with Rami, but it's still three Muslims. Assalamu alaikum, Smith. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So how's it going, man? Alhamdulillah. Can't complain, man. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Bro, you're one of the very few Sikh reverts to Islam that I know. So uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey? Sure, alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Uh, yes, you're right, brother. Um, the religion of Sikh or the belief of Sikh, uh, we, they, they hold uh, their beliefs very strongly. And it's very, very close to Islam. Right? So uh, just before I go into uh, sharing my story, just want everyone to actually understand what Sikhism belief. Right? Now, in the many names of God... Allah is also one of the name of God in Sikhism, right? Hmm. Yes, uh, not many people know this, right? They, um, and it's not just a generic name like God. Allah is Al-Ilah for them, the God. Really? Yes. Are you right? talking like in the GGS? Or? Yes, in the GGS. Um, in fact, uh, in, in, in the GGS, the fifth guru, Guru Arjun Dev, he said that the one God, the Lord of this world, is my God, Allah. Now, uh, that's a translation. But if you uh, take it uh, rawly, right, it says uh, Gusanya. Now, Gusanya is another word that Hindu calls God. But what I want to emphasize here is, at the end, he says, it's my God, Allah. So the word Allah is mentioned that, there, right? Uh, they believe that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a true prophet, right? He was sent by Allah. This is all something that they believe, right? My journey uh, to Islam started when I was about 15 years old. And other than being just no a normal 15 years old, doing all my 15-year-old uh, things, uh, you know, teenagers do, um, I decided to uh, look into the Guru Granth Sahib. So I studied the Guru Granth Sahib and I was, and this, once again, I would just like to go on the record. This is my own personal journey. I'm not saying anyone is wrong. Right? I don't want anyone to take any offense because in Islam, we have been taught by our Prophet and by Allah himself to respect the belief of others. So I'm not here to belittle anyone's belief. All respects to everyone. Having said that, to me personally, I did not feel that um, it is enough. I could not comprehend the idea of uh, God being everything and everyone, pantheism. So this led me to look at other religions. 
I went to Hinduism. Uh, that's quite straightforward. Uh, I went to Buddhism. They don't believe in God, so that's quite straightforward. Um, there was no point looking at atheist or being an agnostic because I was very sure that there is a creator. And I was very sure of that. So I never even went into that, uh, those, those uh, ideologies. So I went to Judaism. Uh, apparently, Jews have uh, this thing that where they say that if you are not born a Jew, then you can mm-hmm. convert to be a Jew. So what can I do? <laughs> um, and then I went to Christianity. So uh, interesting, I, I, I went to Christianity. I went to churches. I spoke to them. I spoke to the priest. I spoke to the, to the padres and all. And they, what they were telling me was not what the Bible was saying. So I found this very interesting, right? Then I started to look into uh, YouTube videos, uh, Speaker's Corner, all this, right? Now it's like, wait, wait a minute, something is like not the right basics here. of Sikhi, did you find them? Uh, I met Jagrash once. Okay, okay. Late Jagrash once, right? Uh, but I, I did not really speak anything. I mean, it was more on a casual talk. It wasn't anything mm. to do about religion. Um, so then I decided to, to, to just look a little bit deep into the Bible. And I, I found these verses, uh, even before knowing, even before knowing, right, that uh, we don't know who the author of the, of the Gospels were and, and, and so on. And there were changes and there were uh, corruptions done to the Bible. I saw this verse that is John 20, 17, where uh, Jesus actually says, or Ita salam actually says, I'm going to your father and my father, to your God and my God. Right, mm-hmm. so okay, that's done for me. <laughs> right, that's done for me. He, he he himself is admitting that he has a god. Right, I'm not gonna listen to anyone else. He's the guy is saying he has a god. Right, so that was done. So then then um then well left with only Islam. So uh, amazingly, it was very hard for me to actually uh, accept. Islam to even open the Quran to even start to look at where Islam is coming from. I just decided to, you know what, I'm just gonna chill for a while, right? Um, I was given a Quran by a friend. I was in my dorm at that time. Um, everyone was away, and I was super bored. And the only entertainment that I have was reading the Quran because I had no any other book. So I said, okay, let me just look at the Quran. Let me see what is this. What what is what's the Quran talking about? So I opened to the first verse, uh, read a little bit, and I came to the to the part in Surah Al Baqarah where Allah actually says, "Whoever Allah wish to guide will be guided, and whoever Allah does not wish to be guided will not be guided. For then Allah will put a whale in front of their eyes and cover up their hearings. They will never be guided." I asked then then Allah here I asked myself one question. How do I know if I'm being, if I'm being guided or not? How do I make that distinction? Like how like how do you know this, right? I, I, it's not like an, I can WhatsApp Allah and ask him, "Yo, am I being guided or not?" <laughs> right? I can't do that. So um, I put the the Quran aside for a while, and I said, "Okay, so logically, let's look at this individual called Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right?" Because he makes a lot of claim. He says, Allah sends him. He says he's a prophet. He says he received revelation. Right? Now, if this person, I'm just making a point. Huh? <laughs> if this person is just simply saying things and, he, and, and whatever he's saying cannot be true, I don't even have to waste my time looking at the Quran. But whatever, if whatever this person is saying is true, then by default, the Quran is real. Mm-hmm. It's authentic. And everything right? else is false. Yeah. Great. So I looked into his life. So let's let's go through the journey with me, right? Brothers and sisters. Um, here's a man who's known as Al Amin for 40 years, right? No one today, right, or in any time for 40 years can be known as the trusted one. Hmm. Right. They will, I mean, as men, we are not perfect. We would do something rather here and there, right? But people used to leave their belongings with him. They used to go for travels. They used to come back and everything would still be there. Right? 100%. Right? And then uh, he was married to one of the richest women in Makkah, a 
Ija. Uh, his uh, family was the custodians of the Kaaba. Right? Even the uncle who brought him up, he was the leader of the Kaaba. Right? So this person didn't strike me that he had he wanted any political gain, that he wanted any name for himself, because what he did did not give him what a politician would want. Because he rather lost all of that. He was uh, prosecuted. He was uh, given threats of murder. It became so bad for him that he had to leave the place where he born, where he was born, right, and go away from there. Uh, it was a time where uh, the authorities in Makkah said that no one is allowed to sell them any kind of food. Muhammad and the followers, right? No one's allowed to. So this, you know, if someone who, who's already who's really in a prestige part of life, he has money, he has a family, right? Uh, he has status. This is not something what, they, what he would do to gain more. As we see today, politicians, that is not what they would do, right? But he continued uh, uh, doing it. So, okay. But then uh, this person, he can't be just making up these things, right? So now, could it be that he was deceived? Could it be that he was deceived? Let's look into this claim. Um, if he was deceived, as the Christians normally say, that uh, it wasn't the angel who appeared right, uh, to him, then why is it when we look into the Quran, it actually talks everything against, right? It tells us who is shaitan. It tells us the beginning of shaitan. It tells us uh, that this is your clear enemy. Stay away from him. Do not work with him. Do not do this. We even start with, A'udhu billahi minash rajim I seek refuge in Allah from this uh, shaitan. Uh, you know, if that was the devil who was doing it, that's not a very smart devil. <laughs> to teach someone something that goes that, that doesn't bring him any benefit. And we know that what, uh, what he says in the Quran, what is the promise of the Iblis to Allah, that I will let astray all the sons of Adam. So then that this couldn't be his motive if he was de de deceiving uh, the prophet. So, okay. Then maybe, uh, you know, you ask yourself these questions. Maybe he was doing black magic. But then to do black magic, you would need to have the uh, idea of, of uh, doing things with the jinn, which comes from the Iblis as well. And the Quran clearly says, stay away from. You cannot have any kind of communication or any kind of relationships with the jinns, right? That we are to separate. Um, maybe he was just making all this up. Could it be? Impossible. For 23 years, this man was having everything in his head and he has to hash it out accordingly and the way, it, the, the miracle of the, the, the ayat and the way it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's portrayed and all. Man can't do this. And he was illiterate. This was a man who was illiterate. Okay, fine. I, I mean, I've, had, I've heard this argument. Yeah, maybe he was illiterate, but he could remember things and he could say it and someone else could write it. Fine. Okay, I mean, it's a logical uh, assertion, right? But then this does not explain all the... Um, actually, when we go to uh, one of the surah where Allah talks about... Um, uh, what was the surah? Uh, Allah, um, the, 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 the most evil guy where Allah says he will never accept Islam and he and his wife will both be in hell. Was it Abu uh, Lahab? Abu Lahab, Abu Lahab, yeah. Abu Lahab yeah. yes. This person was alive hmm. when this surah came. Now this person was alive. Now all he needed to do is, all Abu Lahab needed to do is to disprove the prophethood of, this, of, this, uh, of uh, Prophet Muhammad wasallam, and disprove Islam is to accept Islam. And that's it. It's gone. Because Allah says he will never accept Islam. And he says, yeah, I am. I'm, I'm a Muslim. I accepted it. He was alive. And he did not accept Islam. 
Mm. Right? <laughs> this is a miracle, right? And when we talk about the, uh, the, the embryology, how can men, even modern science today in this generation, can't go that deep into understanding it? And this, it mentions in detail. It mentions right from the gushing of the sperm, how, it's, how it travels, right? Where it meets, how, how much of time it takes, when the bone starts, when the flesh starts, and the whole thing. So this was definitely not a made-up job, right? And even at that time when uh, the enemies of the prophet sent the, uh, the, the people who were the best um, poetry people who uh, were writing poetry and, uh, to go and listen to the recitation of the Quran, the only conclusion that they came back with is they said that whatever this man is saying, it cannot be from this world. Is supernatural. Allah Akbar, and it is. It's not from this world, it is from Allah. Right? So that leaves me for then to only one thing that he, this man was telling the truth. Mm. Right? This man was telling the truth. So, but I wasn't very convinced yet, you know. I was still, I mean, I mean, I still had some doubts. I can't really say what doubts, probably it's the shaitan, but I, I just couldn't accept it yet. So what I did then was. I studied a little bit of da'wah, okay? And this is not to, uh, at that time, back in, at that time, it's not to defend Islam. But what I would do was, like, so I, uh, I was in England for a while, I was in uh, Singapore for a while, I was in Thailand for a while. What I would do is, I would go to a, a Hindu, I would go to a Christian evangelist, I would go to a, a Buddhist, and I will... Uh, start to do da'wah to them. For the reason, for the reason is this. If I am defending Islam, and if you can refute it, then Islam is false. Right? So I am new at this. So I don't know. So I'll go to the older people who know how to refute this. So I'll go with all this, uh, all the da'wah material that I've learned, and I'll present it to them as if I'm a Muslim. But let me just go on. I never claim I was a Muslim at that time. They, they, of course, I mean, if, you, if I come to you and I start doing that, well, you would automatically think that, yeah, it's a Muslim, right? So I did this for about one and a half years, two years. MashaAllah, no one could refute it. Whether it was in England, whether it was in Singapore, Australia, Thailand, no one could refute it, okay? So then this, uh, these arguments... That the Quran has put out, that Allah has put out, his, his, his knowledge is true. Then I thought to myself, look, it would be pretty stupid of me to not listen when my Lord is talking to me and telling me, look, this is how you need to live your life in order to be successful here and to be successful when you return to him, Allah. Right? It would be stupid of me, it would be arrogant of me, then I would be no different from the Iblis. I would be no different. Alhamdulillah. Right? So then, then I took my shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan wa abduhu wa rasuluhu. Uh, yeah. Accepted Islam and um, Alhamdulillah. Seventeen years later, yeah, seventeen, nineteen years later. This yeah, is seventeen yeah. years ago. Mm, yeah, so I accepted Allah Islam when I was seventeen. Uh, I'm thirty-six now. Nineteen years, yeah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Also, a question. How was it when you embarked on learning about Hinduism and stuff like that to see if that was the truth? Like, what did you find? Uh, to me, personally, um, mm -hmm. I could not comprehend the idea of having more than one God. Right? So anyone who has more than one God, I logically, for my own logic, I couldn't accept it. Because, look... If there's one God, then it makes sense. If there is more than one God, then you have more than one will. Right? So you can't have two mighty powers fighting with one another. That's one. Secondly, when you say he is the almighty, then there has to only be one. You can't have two almighties, can you? So that's why logically God has to be only one. 
So um, I never really embark very much into Hinduism as well. Yeah, because yeah, I have a I have a friend. He's Hindu, and uh, me and him talked about this one time. And I told him I was like, bro, like, how how can you be a part of something that has been been altered so much, and you have all these different gods, like, and it, how are they even gods? He's like, oh well, no, they they're not really gods. It's a it's a poor translation. I think he said Bhagavan or something like that. Bhagavan Gita. And, no, no, oh, no, the Bhagwan. The ba- oh. Bhagwan. Yeah, oh, okay. which I guess roughly like the real translation is supposed to be like enlightened one or something like that. I don't know. Allah yeah, But he said something along those lines. And then right. he tried to say the claim that um the true Hindus know that there is only one God. Because if you look at the, the Vedas, the, the scripts, the old scripts, it literally says that there is only one God. But now, now they have these different idols. If they're not guys and they're idols, but it's like, when did these idols come apart or come to be? And like, why is it that if in the, the actual scripts, the Vedas, the ancient Vedas, if it says that there's only one God, why is it that there's all these other idols and people worship them as if they were God? Yeah. You know, it's confusing, man. It's confusing. It is, it is. It is. I, 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 I agree. Um, it's not easy to understand. Yes. I think uh, this is what I also uh, I heard. In, even in Hinduism, they believe that God, there's only one supreme God. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong here. It's either uh, Vishnu or Shiva. Uh, one of them. I, I don't know which one. Uh, and all the others, uh, basically they are the, 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 the middle person. So you pray to a statue, mm. right? But that statue actually like uh, is the middle person. It's not like mm. the God. Mm. But here's the thing, right? God is all powerful. He created this whole universe. Everything that you see, know, and you will ever know come from him. He doesn't need a, a middle person to send message to him. He doesn't need that. Like He knows everything. He even knows what you're going to ask him before you can ask him. Mm. Right? So why the need for, for, for a, a, a middle person? I actually had this argument once with a, a friend of mine. And he said, but wait, you, you guys, you Muslims, you guys have middle people as well, like all those prophets. I said, wait, that's a, that, 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 that's a misconception. We don't worship our prophets. Hmm. Okay? Our prophets bring message from Allah, from the one true God. Okay? He brings the message and then he gives it to the nation. We don't worship. So that, that's a misunderstanding over there. Y'all are worshipping or uh, sending a message to God, whereas the, this is uh, totally different. The prophet gets the message, or the messenger gets the message from God, and then the message is given to us. Right? So that's how it works. So it's not the same. Yeah. Yeah, so what would... What would you do, let's say, figuratively speaking, you were in this uh, dawah situation, how you were back then when you did the two years of dawah. You ran into someone who was basically bringing up the same thing. And for them, they're telling you that uh, I guess Shiva or Vishnu, whichever mm. one, stuff for Allah, that that's God. And that, oh, because they, they know that that's God, well, y'all are basically believing in the same thing just practicing differently so like what would you what would you bring up to them and i know this is a a loaded question like yeah obviously but just out of curiosity no problem inshallah um so yes there's the uh, many experience through uh through those years um i would normally ask them uh certain key questions like for example how do you prove your God is the true God? Is it okay for me to be a Muslim or a Christian and then pray to your God? Or is it okay? Because it's kind of a, it's kind of a, of a, of a trap for me because when they say, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it's okay. You can be Muslim or you can be a Christian, uh, but you pray to our God. There's no problem. Okay, fine. Then you can be a Christian or a Muslim too, right? 
oh no we cannot why not why not why is it okay for me and not okay for you why is it okay for me to be a muslim or a christian or chinese or buddhist and pray to your uh, your belief but when it comes to you you can't be all this you have to be a hindu so that's that, that doesn't make sense over there right so you need we need one universal truth we can't help multiple truths we cannot have multiple truths and they'll normally ask why not why can't we have multiple truths well, because truth is only one all the others are not if the, if one is true then the other is not you know i mean it's hard to accept but i'm sorry that's how the way the world works right so then they, they, most of the time they'll when it comes to these hard questions for them to answer they will just then come with uh, i'm sure i'm sure brothers you know this very well they start to waffling to waffle like such things like there's only one god it doesn't matter who you are who you pray to as mm-hmm. long as your heart is pure as long as you always think of god is okay so man once once all this starts to come out okay i know he's done i'm not going to continue all right but if i must say brothers the best that what i've ever done to in that time was with the christians because it was entertaining for me <laughs> it was really <laughs> I'm, not, <laughs> i'm not trying to be a uh, 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 allah it was because i would i would i would simply ask them questions like um, i mean once i've i've i've, I've uh, you know have enough of knowledge so i'll ask them questions like why do you believe that jesus is god and they will say oh because he's the son of god no no why do you believe that he's god uh because he had to come down and die for the sins also the father can forgive your sins you know i will ask this kind of you know i know it's ridiculous to ask this kind of questions right but i will just test them with this you know i'll just test them with this and i'll see like what are they what are they going to answer and i will i will take out like john you know 37 this is now life eternal that they should know you to be the only true god you know i said like look in the first uh, century the second century no one believes in the trinity right mm. uh, musa alayhi salam moses he, he told the shema listen israel your lord god our lord is one god isa alayhi salam jesus said the same thing listen oh israel our lord god our lord is one the quran says the same thing your lord your lord is one you're the only odd pairs out here suddenly out i mean not two you came with three right <laughs> you came with three and um they they they, they kind of and they kind of they, they cannot be consistent because most of the time they'll say even though they are three but they are not three they are one you will never see them separate you'll never see them wait a minute wasn't when jesus was being baptized the sky opened and the holy death came down who the holy death was uh, the holy spirit and you had the father so you have three different entities at the same time so that's three they're not one that's three right and your claim is jesus had to be sinless for him to die on the cross okay why was he being baptized baptized means the baptize of to get rid of your sins right baptize of sins Oh no because he was just uh showing people how to be What are you talking man? John the Baptist was already doing that a long time ago. We didn't need to show. Right? John the Baptist was already doing that. So why a sinless Jesus needed to be baptized by John the Baptist? <laughs> <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense. I'm sorry, really it doesn't. It mm. doesn't. So um really uh, with, with Christianity was just quite straight forward because um i learned one thing christianity through going to the to the churches which i think that uh, the culture should be uh, should be it 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 comes from islam when you go to church right mashallah these people the way they receive you oh my brother come come it's like you have been lost to them you know they have never met you you've been lost to them for like 10 years 20 years <laughs> and you have suddenly come back oh my brother they come and hug you you need food you can i get coffee for you can i do this come sit down let me get a chair for you you know and they really take care of you and they call you up and they follow up are you coming to church this sunday do you need transport do you need anything right i'll get a grab for you 
the way they really take care of you is subhanallah, right? And so very good culture. I think more Muslims should adopt this culture because this was how our prophet taught us to be, right? Mm. How can you sleep with a full stomach while your uh, neighbors are on an empty stomach? This is the same culture, right? It's the love culture, the culture of caring for others and not just for yourself. Um, so that is one thing that I, I see that's very good. But when it comes to the theology, it just falls apart. Okay, it just falls mm. apart. Like, I would never, you know, Wallahi, I am so, so glad beyond words that Allah has chosen me out of a billion people to guide, to bring to the truth. It's just, Allah there's no words. There's no words. To Sweet, say let me tell you this. And yep. and in return, the like the only thing that Allah wants from us to accept us is just monotheism, just accepting one God. That that's the fundamental thing about Islam. And what's weird is Allah could have chosen something that is illogical or something that needs more convincing. But if you're you have a sound logic and you're not trying to be foolish, anyone can just believe that. It's it's not a contradiction, it's not something that's too difficult, it's not something that's too much of a gamble. And that's all Allah requires. SubhanAllah. That's but let's say you're, you come across someone head to head right now who is a devout Sikh, right? Now, he's been sick all his life. He believes, uh, you know, Sikhism. He was raised on that. I need you to go into this. There's probably a ton of people that's going to watch this video that are currently Sikh. They're like, what is this Islam thing, right? So I want you yeah. to break down Sikhism. Not like, I'm not saying break down as in destroy it. I'm saying break down as in like deconstruct it. Make it easy to understand. Use things from the scripture, things that it kind of makes no sense. And then tell me why there is this weird battle between Sikhs and Muslims today. Like, where does this stem from? Why do they not accept the truth? Is it a cultural thing? Is it a political thing? Is it an ideological thing? Bismillah. Yep. Bismillah. Um... All right. Uh, so I've done this, uh, this, these videos before. I've done it with, uh, with Khalil and so on. Yeah. Right. And I, I got a lot of backlash uh, that we had to do a, a reaction video to actually clear our name because uh, even like the basics of six, uh, they make a reaction video, but uh, unfortunately, they were not educated enough on their own history. Neither were they educated on their own religion, and they misinterpreted us. They strawman us and they lied just basically a lot. Uh, me and Khalil went back and forth to uh, see if we wanted to do this because they were leaders and we don't want to spoil your name. But since they, they were trying to do that to us, so we had to clear our name. So mm. this was the reason why we did it. So if there's any questions that anyone who watches this video, any sick who watches this video, if you have any questions you want to clear up that uh, if you think that I'm lying or making anything up, I will share with the brothers over here the link and you can go and watch those videos because we, we explain everything there from the own Sikhi scholars. Not from a Muslim scholar, not from a Christian scholar, from your own Sikhi scholars itself. So let me go into this. The misunderstanding occurred during the Mughal Empire in India, okay? Now, when it came to the first Mughal Empire, uh, uh, they were Muslims. Now, okay, they were not good Muslims. Okay, let's just say that because they were drinking, they were smoking opium, they, were, they had like God knows how many wives, right? They were, not, they were not good Muslims, right? But nevertheless, they were Muslims. So um, the first emperor, like uh, Emperor Akbar, who actually apostate from Islam and started his own religion called Dini Ilahi, right? Now, he was very good with everyone, all the race. He even uh, visited uh, Guru Nanak, right? He even visited all the other gurus who was, uh, of course, alive in his time. Uh, I don't want to go into the whole history. Then um, we get uh, Emperor Jahangir. Now, this is where it starts. Because Emperor Jahangir is the one who actually called for the execution of their fifth guru, Guru mm. Arjun Dev. And Guru Arjun Dev, he did a lot. Okay? He supported a lot of Muslims. He, uh, so he, he built 
of or, or finished the 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 temple, the golden temple or the Harmander Sahib, which is in Punjab, is the quote and quote quote unquote the Kaaba for the the Sikh, so the mm -hmm. most holiest grounds for the Sikh. Yeah? So he was the one. So um, and not only that, he uh, just uh, you know like executed him. He tortured. He made sure that he was tortured. And here's the misunderstanding. Now they say that Jahangir forced the guru to accept Islam, and this was the reason because the guru did not want to accept Islam. This was the reason that the emperor ordered his uh, execution. That story has a little fabrication and a little exaggeration to it. I, he... still, I still hear that story till today, bro. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's still, it's still in everyone's minds, yeah. But, um, okay, I want to put it into context, okay? I want to put it into context. And I want everyone to understand how the flow... Did he? Yes, he did. Ask the uh, guru to convert to Islam. Yes, he did. But it was not for religious purposes. It was mainly for political purposes. Why? This is what happened. Say bismillah, bro. What are you doing? Yo, it's in my head, man. Stop hey, I like that. I like that. I think there's another thing too. It's it's the perseverance aspect too. Like we're more willing to stick through with things that we set out with an intention. It's impossible to have empathy for others if you're not patient. So my love, bless you for that. First of all, I agree with the fact that the whole thing you said about friends, where it's like if, if they're affecting you more than you're affecting them, then you should probably get some new friends. You want to be investing in stocks, shares, bonds. You want to be investing in crypto because there's this thing called inflation, which means every year that passes by, the value of a dollar goes lower and lower and lower. And the reason being is because they're printing more money, right? That's why money is haram. At least it's, the paper money is haram. Provided that you're actually there and you're being a good father and the mother's being a good mother, best conditions. And behind the mic, Hamza, Andreas, Zortzis, we will go in with our final three with brother Angel, inshallah. Inshallah, bismillah rahman rahim it's not just a responsibility on you. It's a responsibility on all the children, especially your father. In our private area is very elastic. And yeah, if you go too fast, the skin will literally crease up into like the edge of like the little clipper things. And you will literally clip your skin. You don't want to be on YouTube or the internet or anything that, that amount of time. But it's, it's the, the fact is that's what we're doing. Jahangir, uh, one of his son, I think if I'm not mistaken, is Kusoro, his son, rebelled against his father. And he was bringing his army to dethrone his father. Right? It so happened that he stopped at the, uh, the village, I would just say village, the village where uh, uh, Guru Arjun Dev owned that village. Okay? Now, being a man of God, being a humble man, right? He accepted them, he gave them food, and he blessed them. Okay? Like any normal, like, God bless you, go on your journey, be safe. That's about it. But when this story came to the emperor, the story was said, your son is coming to kill you, and the gurus bless them. He immediately thought, oh, okay, so you are committing treason. This person is coming to kill me and you supported him and you blessed him on top of that to, to kill me. So it was a misunderstanding. <clears throat> so let me ask you this question. Back in that time, right? Not only the Muslims, not only the Sikh. Let's look at the Roman Empire, the Chinese Empire, all the empire, mm. the kings, right? In that time, when you commit treason, there's only one thing that happens. You either mm. get to run away or you die. There is, there is no other way. You even in co some countries different. today, even that's the thing. Exactly, right. So he immediately uh, told his soldiers to capture the guru, mm. right? And he told the guru, "Accept Islam now, 
or I will kill him. Because once you accept Islam, he as the leader, right? You then, there is no way for you to take the throne, his throne, right? Like even if Kusro uh, wins, right? Or uh, Jahangir uh, kills Kusro, Kusro would have not win because Kusro's army was very small, right? But you are still here. So if you are here and you convert to Islam, you have no choice then to follow the king because you can't claim prophethood or you can't claim anything to say that it is my throne, it is my right. Because once you're a prophet, then the land belongs to you, the people belongs to you. No, I mean, not in terms of belongs. I mean, you are the leader automatically, right? So this is what, what, what that, that happened. It was a misunderstanding. So of course, the guru said, no, I will not accept Islam, right? And so he tortured the guru and uh, he murdered the guru, right? He murdered the guru. Now, let's look from the Islamic standpoint of this, right? Because I want every Sikh brothers and sisters out there to understand Islam from the Quran, Islam from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not teach this. Allah makes it very clear in the Quran, la ikraha fid din. There is no compulsion in this religion. There is no. Okay? Now, men are left to do what they want to do. Hmm. With their free will. Right? So you can't really say that, oh no, Jahangir forced, uh, you know, all these Muslims, they are forcing everyone to convert. No. Do we condone this as learned Muslims, what Jahangir did? No, we don't. We condemn it. He had no right to force anyone because it was not his call. It was mm. Allah's call. Okay? And he has no right to kill anyone mm. before a proper trial. But like I say, he was not a proper Muslim. So basically at that time when you're a king, you do what you want to. So that was the first misunderstanding. And they thought that his actions represent Islam. They thought they, yeah. I think a lot of people to, till today still think mm. that, right? Like someone, uh, like, like ISIS. People still look at ISIS and say, look, these are the Muslims. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? I always say, look, just because someone straps a bomb to them and go and kill someone and before they bomb themselves up, they say, Allahu Akbar, right? That doesn't represent Islam. Just because someone's running around and saying Allahu Akbar doesn't represent Islam. You see? So you need to know what Islam is before just pointing your fingers and saying mm. things that, that are just simply ridiculous. You know? Islam has nothing to do with ISIS. Nothing. So, um, then the second was Aurangzeb now. Aurangzeb is actually the center of the problem that you, the reason that BJP government today are going against the Muslim, are going against the Sikh, are going even against their own Hindu people, and they are like, you know, whatever uh, Modi is doing, right? The BJP government, is, it all comes, it starts from here, from this person, Aurangzeb Alamgir, right? He was the most strongest emperor. And out of all the, uh, the Mughal Empire, he was the most Islamic. Right? He was the most Islamic. We know this. Why? Because he used to pray. Right? He used to... Uh, there, there, there is, um, there is a, a writing in his memoirs where, where someone wrote and said that this Aurangzeb, while war was going on, he would have stopped and prayed. This was the time of person. Right? So, uh, Allah knows best. Right? So, anyway, out of all, he was the, 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 the most Islamic of them. There are many stories about this. Uh, he butchered thousands of Hindus. He broke thousands of temples. Right? So, that's why the, the Hindus hate, hate him. They hate him. But let's look at the scholar by the name of Aldrich Rashki. Audrey Trashki, who is a historian, who is, I think she is a Christian or an atheist. Uh, I, I don't know uh, what's her belief, but she's definitely not a Hindu. She's not from India. 
right? But she has done in-depth studies. She has, she knows how to even read the um the uh what is the ancient the ancient uh writings, right? Of the Hindus, she has learned that, so she knows how to read it. She knows to like read Sanskrit. Sanskrit, Sanskrit, Sanskrit. 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 Hmm. Sanskrit uh, she knows to read Pashto and all that. Now. She has done an intense research on this individual, and this is what she says. Did Aurangzeb go out and kill many Hindus? Yes, he did. But is it to say that he killed thousands of Hindus? That is an exaggeration. Did Hindus go out and kill Hindus? Yes, they did. Because it was the time of war. So what has been done here for, to, 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 to diminish this person's name is to say all the wars that he fought and the people that he killed, right? they took it and they say that this person went on a killing spree of Hindus. Right? <laughs> there you go. Right? They just twist the whole thing up. Right? Uh, did he break temples? Yes, he did. They said that he, they broke in thousands. He broke thousands of Hindu temples. Once again, that's an exaggeration. Out to the counting, he only broke up to maybe 20 to 30 temples. And he did this. It, it was, like I say, once again, it was a battle strategy and it was a kind of a political strategy. So what happens in India is when they go to a place, because they're, they're in a certain place, like, for example, Benares, right? Everyone over there, they put their faith, they put their belief in this one uh, temple, in this one, um, they are God, right? They are who, are who they believe to be God. So when they come and they break this, 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 uh, these statues and they break up the temple, right? It demotes uh, the, you know, uh, the, the motivation of the soldiers. Like, look, the person that you believe, the, 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 the entity that you believe is going gonna, is gonna, to you know, help you, it's gone. What are you going to do now? So it was more of on that. It was nothing to do with religion at all. Right? And we know that he did this. Why? Because, once again, I'll name Benares. Now, Benares is full of Hindu temples. Now, we know he went to Benares. He broke one temple. He broke two temples. But there are lines of temples. Right? Out of that whole lines of temples, 20, 30 temples, he only broke two or three. Now, if he wanted, if he was going around breaking Hindu temples, it will be much more easier for him to break all the temples in that one place. Why did he only break two or three? It was for this, for this particular reason. He was not interested in, in, in uh, taking his energy and breaking all the temples. He was just trying to demotivate the people over there and the soldiers over there. So when they're demotivated, what happens? They don't fight and you surrender. Because when you do fight, then, well, we'll have to fight and then probably we will kill you. That's how it works in war. You don't kiss someone when someone's coming to kill you. That's just ridiculous, right? I mean, that's how it works, right? So that's how they painted this, the, the picture that he went on a killing spree for Hindus. He hated Hindus. He was a racist. Um, the other thing is, uh, Aurangzeb, they say that he murdered his own family, his three brothers. Is it true? Yes, it's true. But let's look again at the context. He was not the only Mughal to do that. His father Shah Jahan did that. His father Jahangir did that. Because it was the culture. That was the culture. Once the king dies, the brothers or the men in the family would have to fight for the power and fight. They have to kill their own siblings until they're the only one left and then they become the emperor. That was just how it is. Don't ask That's me. That's a fact. Yeah. Right? That was just how it is. So he himself did this. In fact, when he, when he caught his elder brother, right, and his elder brother knew that he was going to die, Aurangzeb asked him one, one thing, and this is, once again, it's in the memoirs of Aurangzeb, Aurangzeb asked him this, what would you do if you was in my place? And the brother did not lie to him. He said, I would kill you. Right? 
so so okay all his brothers was dead then he imprisoned his father for what i think what six seven eight years or 20 years or something i know not 20 years can't really remember how many years but for a long time he imprisoned his father and he say like look at this man how evil is he to imprison father let's once again look at the context this was the same man who hated this person this was his son multiple times he sent his son out to go and fight for war hoping that he would die there and if he does not die he would send people to go and kill him so what difference now that i'm the king wouldn't you try even harder to kill me right the very fact that he said that i will not kill you why do they they will never say this this is what he told his father you will be here in the red fort right you can ask for anything you want anything you shall have it but your freedom you will never have this is what arun said said to his father anything you want you can have but not your freedom obviously the guy was afraid of his life right because if he let the old king go don't you think his uh, parliament will still be there his influence will still be there right that's not a very intelligent thing for, to do for for their time in in, in their, their 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 ideology right now what did this person did why does uh siki has a bitter taste in history with this person as well he executed the ninth guru which is guru tej bahadur right and um guru tej bahadur's uh, uh, son which is uh, the 10th guru guru har uh, guru hargobin singh okay guru har guru hargobin singh his children were um were cement alive right and they just left the bodies there now there are various stories to this Number one, when the execution of Guru Tej Bahadur happened, okay, there are sources that say that Aurangzeb was not even in Delhi; he was off fighting the Pathans, and of course he would give his general the rights. Okay, you go ahead, take care of whatever needs to take taken care of, do whatever that needs to be done, because I need to go and fight a war, right? You can't be. is to ping me at that time so they executed guru tej bahadur and they uh, like, like i said they killed his uh, grandchildren as well um so you see the, the the gurus are very very close to uh, sikhi right they are very close uh, some some might call them uh, reincarnation of god some call them prophets right whatever you know they, they, they whatever it may be they are very close they are very high rank people in the sick uh, belief when you have people killing them of course you're going to have uh, a problem that try to put ourselves to try to understand them in their shoes just for a while okay and um astaghfirullah a'udhu billah right Imagine if someone this would have not happened, but imagine if someone would have uh, murdered any of our prophet, we probably hate them too, we probably dislike them too. Okay, but this has these are things that happened what five hundred years ago, four hundred years ago, right? And 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 things have changed so much from then, right? And. like we say this is not that is what, what islam has taught this is not the real true teachings of allah right to simply go around and kill people because what does the quran says once again the quran allah says clearly saving one man saving one life is as if saving the whole of humanity right and killing one innocent life is as if killing the whole of humanity right so this is it's very clear it's very clear right mm-hmm. things happen back in those times people fought people killed each other right people could kill each other because they were not worshiping the same god people kill each other because you were looking at my sister strangely <laughs> people kill each other because you you owed them a certain amount of money people kill life was very cheap back then 
it was very easy. People could just kill you because they didn't like the way you look. Okay, if you, I mean, how are you going to control that you were born that way and, they, and someone didn't like the way you look and if you couldn't protect yourself, they would kill you. <laughs> so, you know, um, that, that, that is, the, uh, is, the, is, is, is the problems or the misconceptions that has been happening and uh, uh, many Sikhs, uh, unfortunately, they, uh, they've not looked into this deeply. They've probably looked at the surface, but not deeply into it. And, they, and, and, and if you want to do this research, logically, you need to not only look at your own sources, you need to look at the Hindu sources, you need to look at the Muslim sources, and then you can come to a conclusion from all, all the sources. Right? Um, not to degrade or not to say anything wrong. I have sick friends till today. I just did a show with them today morning. Right, uh, I have Zoom uh, talk to them. The one that I did is the president of the youth, youth sick Malaysian president. Right, I respect them. They are they are good people. You know, they, they they stand up for the right things. They protect people. Right, they don't lie. You know, they always support their community. They're good people. But. For the modern or the other generations or the, the, the ones who have this uh, misunderstanding towards Islam, uh, there are many claims that can be made. There mm. are many claims. And yes, one of the biggest claims made is that Guru Nanak went to Mecca. Okay? He went to Mecca and then um, the Qazi saw him because he was sleeping. His feet was pointing towards the Kaaba. So the Qazi saw, saw him and... Uh, they did not like it, so they carry his feet and they moved. And they moved his feet. And when they moved his feet, the Kaaba followed the feet. Right? Fine. You can say uh, a claim, make a claim, of course, no problem. But let's look at the history. Does history show that the Kaaba has been moved? No. Okay? This was about... Islam was already about 1,000 years in, 900 to 1,000 years in. So Hajj was very popular already. People was coming from around the world. Uh, I think I guess it would be the Ottoman Empire at that time in charge of the Kaaba, probably 500 years ago. Should be I think I think the, if I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong, it would be the Ottoman. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it would it would have been already a lot of people have been uh, coming to the Kaaba. You are telling me. No one who is in the Masjid al-Haram at that time, no one wrote this down. There were hundreds and thousands of Muslims in the Kaaba. No one wrote this down. And Guru Nanak himself did not write this down. Right? It was written by... Uh, uh, well, his writing is in the Guru Granth Sahib. But he was not part of the gurus. He was not part of the ten gurus. Right? Uh, I, I forgot his name. He is the only person who wrote this down. The only person who wrote this down. Even Guru Nanak himself did not write this down. Guru Nanak had a very, very good companion who followed him around. They were like, Wallahi, they were like brothers. His name was Bai Mardana. Who was Mardana? Mardana was a Muslim. He was born, he born as a Muslim, he lived as a Muslim, he died as a Muslim. Right? He would have known about this. Did he write it down? No. Do we have his writing in the Guru Granth Sahib today? In the GGS? Yes. The Gurus added his writing into the, Guru, into the GGS. Did they talk anything about this? None. Neither Guru Nanak spoke about this, neither did Guru, uh, sorry, neither did uh, um, Bayi Mardana spoke about this. Only Gurdesh, his name is Gurdesh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right? If I'm, if I'm not wrong, forgive me if I'm wrong, right? Only this one person writes down about it, right? Only this one person writes down about it. So, of course, fine, no problem. If this is the claim that you want to make, produce your evidence, right? If you are, because look, even in the Quran, Allah says this, right? Bring your evidence if you are truthful. So we are not saying you are wrong. We are not dis dis dismissing you. 
of course, you must understand it's hard for us to believe this. Right? You can't go to a Hindu and say this and then expect him to believe that. You can't go to a, uh, to a, 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 what, um, a Christian and say this and expect him to believe that. So of course it's for us as Muslims, it will be hard to believe us. But bring us, produce your proof. Because in our history, there is not written. It's not written. And I know probably you, you would say like, of course, all the hundreds and thousands of people were Muslim. Of course, they were not going to write this. So you are saying that all the hundreds and thousands of Muslims were deceiving all the other Muslims? Not, not even one of them were truthful out of these hundreds and thousands of Muslims? The Imam over there? So you are basically saying all Muslims over there were corrupted? Come on, that's a big claim to do mm. to make, bro. You know? We don't want so, to cause any kind of problems here. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. So, Akhi, I had a question. So given that we're kind of short on time, so I'm thinking that you know how like Ahmadiyya, you know, they, they had their own agenda. It's not Islam. They they started, you know, there's the British history. We're not going to get into that. But I'm wondering if in the Sikh scriptures, they it's monotheist, right? And, you know, a lot of people say, you know, these people believed in Islam or believed in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then what was the point of these Sikh scriptures? Like, what was the point of Sikhism? Like, what was their agenda if they already believed in Islam? Okay. <clears throat> Very good question, Akhi. Right. <clears throat> so this is the belief, right? And um, uh, I'm taking this from uh, the late Jagrash Singh. Okay. And we have the video, him agreeing to this. And I believe uh, there are other videos and other six also believe this. They believe this. Before the GGS, all belief system and all religion had the truth, but they did not have the complete truth. So when the GGS came down, then the complete truth was given. That's number one, right? Number two, right? They make this claim. That the Prophet wasallam was a true prophet. He, was, he brought the message from God, but then he got corrupted. You got selfish, Udu Billah. Udu Billah, right? Say, yeah. yeah. I mean, you see, uh, before I continue, you know, if you're going to make claims like that without uh, giving evidence, I mean, just saying that, oh, our guru said it, or this person said it, this person said it. And then if we say something, you can't get mad, man. Right? If, we, if you say this to our prophet and we some, say something to your prophet, and then you want to get mad. That's not right, bro, right? I mean, come on, right? If you can dish it out, then you can take it in. So... Um, that is the reason why they believe that the, the, the foolproof, you know, the Guru Granth Sahib needed to come, right? Um, there are many authors, many people whose writing were put into the Guru, into the GGS, okay? Even the Muslims, uh, Bhagat Kabir, uh, Mardana, okay? All these people were Muslims. They were Sufi Muslims, no doubt, right? But they were Muslims. This, I, I can't comprehend that, Akhi. Like, if Allah, the one true God, this truth, right? If he wants to give the truth, why does he give the truth just 500 years ago? What about the thousands and thousands years ago, right? That mankind has lived and died. Because now for them, it's very easy tomorrow when they stand in front of Allah, and Allah asks them questions to judge them, they will say, it's easy to answer then. You did not give us the full truth. Don't blame us. You can't throw us in hell now. It's your fault. You did not give us the full truth. Right? How did we know after a billion years, only then you're going to bring down the full truth? So you can't blame us and, and punish us now. So it, it is... It is, it is, it, it is um, I, I just don't think logically that, that that god would have done that it's a contradiction it's like when ahmadi say that you know we still believe the prophet was the final prophet but then we also have this guy mirza Ghulam Ahmed. it makes no sense it makes no sense really makes no sense okay right because we believe as muslims right as learned muslims alhamdulillah we believe look when adam Ali, when adam alayhi salam came down right then then the full truth was given to him and then it got corrupted and then uh, the Zabur came down to, uh, to Dawood, 
right? Then it got corrupted, and then Allah gave the Injil to Isa, and then it got corrupted, and then done. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam given the Quran, and here Allah says, in only in the Quran you will find this, right? You will not find this in the in in any other uh, 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 scriptures. I can dare to say that that Allah will not say this in any other scriptures. What He says is, it is us who brought down the scripture, and it is us who will preserve it. Hmm. So we know that it's not going to be any other scripture because this time Allah says that He will preserve it. So this is the only one that you need, and nothing else. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. I oh, know, bro. You got anything to say? Um. Nope. Wow. <laughs> no, be okay. It's a lot, yeah. bro. Man, this was a insane Very journey. Very informative. Man. Yeah. What do you? What do you? What advice would you have to brothers and sisters that are thinking of reverting or are reverts themselves, but their whole family, their whole history, it just politically, ideologically, just not in line with Islam. And they feel like, what if I have to pick now? Right. I think, I think the best advice I can, can give, inshallah, bismillah, right, is that read your scripture, whoever you may be, a Hindu, uh, a Christian, right? Be learned on your scripture and then go to the Quran Study the Quran, right? Look at the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Study the life. Ask your friends, right? Because the truth is not difficult to find. Right? No, I mean people that already accept the truth. They are they already know. Either they're gonna okay. revert or they already reverted, but they're like, bro, what about my family? You know? It's it, like Islam fundamentally is, you know, Sikhism's anti, right? So Mm-mm. well. That's or maybe like, how was your experience? Like, okay, yeah. Uh, although it's a hard question to answer, but uh, Alhamdulillah, right? Um, if you have already accepted Islam or you want to accept Islam, right? <clears throat> Here's the thing. Your Lord comes first, right? Allah comes first. I know a sister who is actually... Alhamdulillah, thank you, brother, for asking me this question. I know a sister who has just reverted. And she is uh, she doesn't have money. Okay, she's like I think about 18 years old. So she uh, depends on her parents, right? And her parents are strict Hindus, strict Hindus, right? Um, that that they would probably kill her, but it will go to that extent. So she's very afraid. She can't read the Quran. She can't perform her prayers. She has to basically live like a kafir. She has to eat pork. When the, the, the parents could pork, she has to eat pork. So she is feeling very, 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 mashallah, I don't know, may Allah be with her, right? <clears throat> so she asked me for, uh, for my, uh, my opinion. What, what to do. So um, I told her, look, <clears throat> number one, you have to understand that Allah knows everything. Allah knows all and Allah would not make it hard on you. Allah says that he will only test someone who is that person, that individual is able to accept that test. Okay. And there are many things that goes into the Quran of the teachings of, the, of, teachings of Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's so easy. I told her sister, did you know you can lie down and you can perform your salah. In your condition, right, you can do it. Mm. You can do it. No one would ever, no one would ever think someone lying down and say, oh, he's performing salah or she's performing salah. No one would ever do that, right? So, uh, learn to take your wudu. You can take your wudu. Do perform your salah, okay? In terms of uh, eating pork, right, try to not do it. But if you are being tested, right, it's a different story. But try not to do it. You always have options, right? You always have options until you don't have options. Mm-hmm. As simple like as the, that. It's like the Uyghur Muslims in China, you know, being forced fed. They can't control that. Correct. Right. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, there's always options until you don't have options. Mm-hmm. If your option is dying, killing yourself or eating, then you have to eat. Mm-hmm. Right, because that is intel. It, it, it then comes down to your intellect. You have to eat. Of course, you don't eat till you are like you know 
just eat enough for you to live, right? And this is all all the, the teachings, right? Mm-hmm. So don't force yourself, and then go look for uh go look for for people who can uh, like from the government states, right? They will probably help you with uh, in terms, inshallah, with cash flow or place to live or anything like that. And uh, try to get yourself, uh, you know, out from the house. If this is the position that you are in, right? <clears throat> Maybe uh, enroll yourself in a, in a school and tell your parents you want to stay in, 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 the, in the dormitory instead of coming back home. That is one thing, right? That uh, uh, for, for anyone who is revert and um, they're facing this problem. For anyone who, who already has the truth and they want to revert, but, uh, you know, like you say, have uh, these doubts about my what about my parents or about this or about that. Yes, your parents are important, your family are important, but you have the truth. You you accept the truth first. You do right to your to your God first, right? Because that's the most important thing. You settle your mistakes, your faults with 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 God with Allah. So you take the shahada and you immediately ask for forgiveness from Allah first. Okay? <clears throat> then, then, you know, you've got all this community around you where you can sit down, you can talk and you can discuss with them how do I handle the situation. Inshallah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. All right, so I, I have a feeling Basics of Sikhi is going to watch this video. They're going to they're gonna want like a live debate. I'm just playing. But nah, if anyone nah. made it this far, just just smash that like button because you do realize the people that are in opposition, they're going to dislike the hell out of this video. Um, and Brother Smith, if anyone wants to contact you or anyone wants to send you a DM or or anything like that, do you have like an email or someone something that people can reach out to you as? Yes. Uh, so um, Hasmeet Chal, H-A-S-M-E-E-T-C-H-A-A-L. That's my Facebook um s-m-e-e-t-c-h-a-a-l that's my instagram perfect and and i'll put all that in the description box uh one thing actually that i want to share so recently what i've done over here is um with uh, other river brothers as well <clears throat> we have uh opened up and established a islamic apologetics academy where we teach on how to uh have discussion intellectually and present Islam without belittling other religion and uh, bringing them down and so on intellectually yet. Um, all the classes are completely free. We do not charge anything for the classes. All that we ask from you, if you do want to join us, you have to be committed for at least three months. So we have a syllabus on Christianity. We have syllabus on atheism. We have syllabus on Buddhism. We have syllabus on Hinduism at the moment, inshallah. And we also have syllabus on ethics of being a dying. How a dying should be. Inshallah. There's a syllabus on everything, man. Mashallah. <laughs> inshallah. Okay, so uh, what is the... You, you can just give me the link. I'll put that in the yeah. description box, all right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you the link, but I'll mention it first. So it's called... So it's kum, not K-U-M. It's Q-O-O-M, as in in the Quran, kum fanzir. Right, so uh, that's why we took the name Kum because it says stand and proclaim the greatness of your Lord. Right, mm. so Kum Fanzir, so it's Kum Q O O M Academy, Kum Academy. Alhamdulillah, I'm gonna check it out. Barakallah feet. Thank you, Akhi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. here, bro. Sarah here for your time. Barakallah feet, Kum Akhi. Alhamdulillah. All right, guys, if you made it this far. Comment down below, hashtag come to the truth. And until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Say bismillah, bro. What are you doing? Yo, it's in my head, man. It's the whole thing. I like that. I like that. I think there's another thing too. It's it's the perseverance aspect too. Like we're more willing to stick through with things that we set out with an intention. It's impossible to have empathy for others if you're not patient. So my love, bless you for that. First of all, I agree with the fact that the whole thing you said about friends, where it's like if, if they're affecting you more than you're affecting them, then you should probably get some new friends. You want to be investing in stocks, shares, bonds. You want to be investing in crypto because there's this thing called inflation, which means every year that passes by, 
the value of a dollar goes lower and lower and lower. And the reason being is because they're printing more money, right? That's why money is haram. At least this, the paper money is haram. Provided that you're actually there and you're being a good father and the mother's being a good mother, best conditions. And behind the mic, Hamza Andreas Zortzis, we will go in with our final three with brother Angel, inshallah. It's not just a responsibility on you, it's a responsibility on all the children, especially your father. In our private area is very elastic. And yeah, if you go too fast, the skin will literally crease up into like the edge of like the little clipper things and you will literally clip your skin. You don't want to be on YouTube or the internet or anything that, that amount of time. But it's, it's the, the fact is that's what we're doing. 